and welcome to Morning Coffee with Pizan Academy. I'm Deanna and happy Thanksgiving to you. Today I want to talk about the top five Thanksgiving food traditions and explain a little bit about their history. So let's just dive right in. Number five is cranberry sauce. Where did that come from? The first description we have of the cranberry was by Roger Williams, one of the early colonists, and he described it as a sharp fruit like a barberry. Now the barberry was the fruit from the barberry bush and this would be added to sauces to give him a little bit of a bite in England. And so he's comparing what he knows in England to this new world fruit. But in his description, he uses the Native American word for it, sassanemish. And so that is what we have as the first description of the cranberry. Now fast forward and people start using it to make sauces. And by the 18th century, Cranberry sauce, which is basically cranberries with a lot of sugar added to it to take away that bitterness and that sour bite, becomes a staple. And since cranberries are ripe in the fall, it becomes part of the Thanksgiving tradition. Number four is mincemeat and pies. Mincemeat goes back to the Elizabethan era and was eaten during the Christmas season. Mincemeat is made up of part of the animal that you may not eat normally because people wanted to preserve the whole animal and to have food that would last over the winter, they would mix the feet, the neck meat, the tongue with herbs and spices and some vegetables and it would last over the winter and then they would take out this mixture that they had preserved and they would put it into a pie, thus mincemeat pie. This was a Christmas tradition in England. The pilgrims didn't believe in celebrating a lot of the more festive and joyous traditions. They thought Christmas should just be a day of remembrance and prayer. And so they moved this mincemeat tradition of pie to the Thanksgiving. And so they would have their mincemeat pie in Thanksgiving where they could use parts of the animal and then preserve it with these herbs and vegetables. Now fast forward a little bit and again by the 18th century, we see people making pies for Thanksgiving. Now this could include cherry pie or apple pie or whatever fall fruits would be in season. The wealthy would give pies to the poor or even ingredients for them to make the pies themselves. And kids could also participate in the pie making and it became a family tradition where the kids would do the pinching around the rim and could help make the pies. Another good thing about the pies is that you could keep them in the cellar and if they froze in the cold, it would be fine and you could take them out and you could serve them. So they were also a really good way of preserving food. Number three are sweet potatoes. Now, Thanksgiving was traditionally a New England holiday, but as it spread and over time, the South started picking up on this tradition and they integrated a lot of the local fare, which would include sweet potatoes. And so sweet potatoes became more of a Southern tradition. But in 1929, Jean Anderson in the American Century Cookbook put in a recipe of sweet potato casserole that was topped with marshmallows. Marshmallows were first created in the 1800s as a confection or a candy, but it was in this cookbook that we see them added to the top of the sweet potato dish, and that has now become a Thanksgiving tradition. Number two, we're now getting into the 1900s, and with new foods and new technologies coming about, we have a recipe from 1955. This is the Campbell soup recipe where their home economist came up with this idea of a green bean casserole and they printed it on the label. Now the French fried onions were around since 1933, but they didn't sell very well until this recipe came out and their sales just went through the roof. And so green bean casserole was actually invented by the Campbell Soup Company as a way to sell their soup. And it has become a very popular Thanksgiving tradition and personally one of my favorites. And our top food tradition for Thanksgiving is turkey with stuffing, something we all can enjoy. Now the pilgrims may or may not have had turkeys. We're not sure. We just know that they had wild fowl. 
But the turkeys, if they did eat, would have been these smaller, a little gamier, a lot more dark meat than what we know today. Over time, the turkeys that we see today have been selected and a lot of the other varieties of turkeys have kind of fallen to the wayside. Now there are some farmers, organic farmers, that are reintroducing these other varieties of turkey, but most of us know the big fat turkey with a lot of white meat, and that's the turkey that has evolved over time and that we see on our table on Thanksgiving Day. Prior to the American tradition that begins in the 1700s with turkey becoming the preferred meat, most people would have eaten any fowl. Could have been duck or goose or guinea fowl, any wild bird, but in America, people began to have a real taste for turkey and that tradition begins quite early about 170 years ago. Now again, we have some regional variations and a Cajun variation that comes out of Louisiana that you may have heard of is called the turducken. Yes, this is a chicken stuffed in a duck, stuffed in a turkey. So I'll give you a little detail on how this is done. So the recipe that explains how to do this is 13 pages long and takes two days. Now you don't have to do this, but if you want to, you've got to have three birds of a particular size. The turkey should be about 20 to 25 pounds, the duck about four to five pounds, and the chicken about two to three pounds. You're going to put the chicken along with some andouille sausage stuffing into the duck, and then you're going to put the duck along with some cornbread stuffing into the turkey, and then bake it. Now this takes two days. Again, the recipe is 13 pages long. If you don't feel like going through all that work, but you want to try this, you can order them from some Cajun food specialist down in Louisiana and have it sent to your home. So let's talk stuffing. Where did it come from? Our first stuffing recipe is an ancient Roman recipe, and it comes from a man named Apicus from the second century BC to somewhere in the first century AD. We're not exactly sure of his date. And in this recipe, he talks about stuffing chicken and pig and rabbit and even dormouse with vegetables and herbs and spices. And so that's our first indication that people were stuffing their meats very early. Fast forward, and in 1853, we have a recipe for bread stuffing, and this is our first indication that they would use bread to stuff turkeys and poultry. This recipe comes from Elizabeth Ellicott Lee's cookbook called Domestic Cookery, Useful Recipes, and Hints for Young Housekeepers. In Mrs. Lee's recipe, it gives you enough to stuff the turkey. It also says that you can cook some and serve it on the side. Now I think a lot of people in the modern world will do that, and some people don't even necessarily stuff their turkey with the stuffing. It's also called dressing, and so it's served on the side, and then they may put some apples and onions and aromatics to stuff the bird for flavor. In the modern world, we have even more variations. We have tofurkey if you're a vegetarian, we have gluten-free stuffing, and so we've adapted these recipes, as you can tell, over time to fit modern tastes and modern lifestyles. I hope you've enjoyed learning about these Thanksgiving food traditions, and we are so grateful to have you watching our videos. If you're enjoying what we're doing, please like, subscribe, share. We have links to our other social media, and from our family to yours, we wish you the very happiest of Thanksgivings.